Hello everyone, my name is Robbo and we're going to be talking about book clubs, a community where we're pretty sure they exist but we will have no motivation to find out for ourselves. Joining a book club can allow you to meet people from all walks of life, including people like this. A man from Illinois is plowing through a dozen books a week, and he says he's read more than 5,000 books in eight years. There are avid readers, and then there's Michael Coulter. The 70-year-old from Peru, Illinois, says he reads an average of two books a day. What kind of books do you not like to read? Love stories and most science fiction. Why not love stories? I like love I, I like love too, but... <laughs> what do you think makes a bad book? Sex. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so you're telling me he's read 5,000 books since he's retired, he hates romance novels, and what makes a book bad is chicks? Tell me you're divorced without telling me you're divorced. Now, it's great that this elderly man has been reading so many books because over the past 10 years, the discourse within book clubs has been that the medium of physical books is dying out. In 2019, UK print book sales fell after a 43% surge in audiobook sales. And after COVID took over the world in 2020, many believed that the medium would completely disappear. But during lockdown, something quite unexpected happened. This is a book review, TikTok style. <laughs> where book lovers make short, fast-paced videos, using music, sound effects, and photos to bring literary works alive. Hello there. This is me finishing it. <laughs> okay, I can confidently say that I've never wailed after reading a book. Dumbledore dying in Harry Potter? Not even a tear. I guess I'm just not reading hard enough. This community on the social media app TikTok has been hard to miss if you've used the app, but if you are unfamiliar, the phrase book talk refers to a sub community on TikTok for book enthusiasts to connect with each other and share their favorite books. Through the hashtag book talk, the community's impact on the platform has been huge with over 60 billion videos being posted on the platform with the hashtag accruing over 200 billion views. And this tsunami of popularity has even been reflected in the publishing industry. January, February, March. BookTok is having a major impact on the book industry. In 2021, adult fiction driven by BookTok grew by 25% over the previous year. Last year, it grew another 8%. That is remarkable, though I'm not surprised it was adult fiction. I really would have read anything during the pandemic. I mean, if it was a choice between daily cases and a pharaoh at Euphoria High, you know exactly which one I'm taking. The popularity of books within the BookTok community has had a direct correlation to its success in real life. And when you've got a whole section in a bookstore dedicated to a hashtag of all things, that's a great indicator for how much success it can generate for bookstores. And BookTok has done more than just drive up the sales of well-known books. Many unknown books that had been published years ago have also skyrocketed in popularity. Showing people on TikTok what books are through photos, imagery and music is really catchy. The video they created for this book, We Were Liars, has been viewed more than 5 million times and generated a boom in sales. One of my kids forwarded me a TikTok video um, and said, you seem to be popular on TikTok. And I was quite surprised. A month later, I was back on the New York Times bestseller list. Having a public platform myself, if a sibling of mine came running in and said, hey, you're trending on TikTok, my first reaction would be, oh shit, what did I say? This surprise has happened for many new authors and has created an incredible buzz within the community. But as with all things that reach this level of popularity, there has also been many criticisms. Readers have reported dips in writing quality, more predictable writing in newly published books, and they've even debated about whether the book talk community is actually ruining the experience of reading. So tonight, we're going to be looking into the current state of the book talk community, how these problems were able to exist within the community, and what we can do to improve it. And it's important to note that problems found within the book talk community invoked by an increase in popularity have actually been present in book clubs before. In fact, They've existed since the very beginning. The first ever known organized book club in the US took place in 1634. English-born Anne Marbury Hutchinson migrated to Boston that year. After developing strong ties with local women, she began organizing meetings in her home discussing scriptures from the Bible. Her meetings eventually became so popular that even some men were attending, 
including some very powerful men within the religious community. In 1637, she was banished from Boston for, as the Reverend put it, organizing a promiscuous and filthy coming together of men and women. Oh, the irony. So obviously that was not the real reason for her punishment. The real reason was that reading was considered a form of education, which was prohibited for women of that time. And the idea of education only being afforded to the select few was prevalent throughout that era. After all, pre-20th century, very few books had actually been printed. It wasn't until 1934 that paperback books were mass produced by publishing company Albatross, producing them at much cheaper costs to enable higher volumes of printing. You might know them today as Penguin Books. They were responsible for printing some of the early works of Mary Webb, Agatha Christie, and Ernest Hemingway. So if you needed any more convincing to buy a Penguin book, then there it is. Without them, we wouldn't have romance, mystery, or alcoholism. I bring all this up to point out how one small change in an industry can have life-changing ramifications. A novelist like Agatha Christie without paperback books would only have been known by the elites of the world who could afford to buy her books keeping them as decorative pieces on their bookshelves. But because of the paperback publishing methods of Penguin Books, her novels were able to reach a global audience so readers of all types could enjoy her books and then put them on bookshelves. No, you know what? Let's move on. Let's move on. What I'm trying to say is that the community of book talk is to today's authors what Penguin Books was to Agatha Christie, in that it provides a channel for ordinary readers to discover unknown books and catapult them into global success. These are my god tier books, aka my favorite books of all time. My favorite fantasy romance series of all time is Throne of Glass. If you want to pick up a memoir, but like me, truly could not give less of a fuck about 90% of celebrity discourse, you should try and maybe you should talk to someone. Next up along those same lines is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which I think is one of the best like murder mystery books that I've read. Let's start with one that took book talk by storm last year, and I definitely contributed to that. I'm not sorry at all. The Will of the Many by James Eilington. This is what the core of the trend is all about. Discovering new books that get great recommendations from people on TikTok. If you have scrolled TikTok before, this is usually the method in which you would come across book talk. The format of book recommendations is the basis of this trend, starting with a creator named Kate Jacobs. They began posting their personal book recommendations during lockdown using the hashtag book talk, and they were pretty simple videos. In my last TikTok, I recommended some books that were admittedly pretty popular, which means there was a chance you've already heard of them. But don't worry, I'm making it up for you today by talking about some criminally underrated books that I highly, highly suggest. By request, we'll be focusing on dystopian and YA sci-fi novels that you will just love. Hello, today I'm going to talk to you about some of my favorite YA fantasy books. This is by request and I have a lot of recommendations for you. Another great read is The Star Touched Queen. This book is heavily inspired by Hindu mythology and follows a girl who has been ostracized because of her ominous horoscope. However, it all changes when she marries a foreign ruler and discovers more about herself. And then finally, we have The Daughter of the Pirate King duology by Trisha Levenseller. This book follows the daughter of the pirate king who lets herself be captured by an enemy pirate in order to find a secret hidden map on their ship. I know, that's it. I thought as they were describing it, a dragon would come flying down from out of nowhere, maybe even putting some subway surfers below just to keep the attention of iPad kids. But for such a simple and frankly wholesome TikTok, you would wonder how something like this would go viral. It is a challenge to fit a lot about books in a limited time frame. But what you learn when you book talk is just how to get the key points across that you think will interest other readers in that book. How much engagement is there with your audience? And do you think they're following you for recommendations or for the entertainment value of your posts? I think it's a mix of both. I think uh, readers go on book talk looking for relatable content for people just like them and to find a community. And I think they also go there looking for their newest read. I know I've personally gotten countless recommendations from people I follow on the platform. Holy shit, how many books do you have? Is the house for your books and you live there as well? Like what grade level are you reading at? 52? But in all seriousness, they make a great point. People go on book talk in search of books they have never read before. And here's Kate with book recommendations, which as they said, get the point across clearly and directly, enticing viewers to read the books themselves. And it seems that audiences have responded well to this type of content. Kate has gained 314,000 followers on TikTok, and has continued to post their book recommendations over the past four years, making skits referencing books and continuing to recommend books to their audience. They have posted hundreds, even thousands of TikToks. So naturally, 
I watched every single one of them. And through that gauntlet, I noticed a bit of a pattern. Hello there, I have some more book recommendations for you. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about my favorite sci-fi and fantasy YA romances. Let's go to the big shelf and start off with some fantasy. Margaret Rogerson wrote two great fantasy standalones, the first being An Enchantment of Ravens, and then there's also Sorcery of Thorns. The Throne of Glass series is a high fantasy series following an assassin. Here are a few books that are great for people who are new to the sci-fi fantasy genre or looking to get into it. Now, if you're looking for fantasy, I recommend with starting off with some urban fantasy like the Trill Trilogy by Amanda Hawk. Hello, today I'm going to talk to you about some of my favorite YA fantasy books. Okay, so if you still don't get what the pattern is and you haven't heard the word fantasy before, then yes, Kate's recommendations revolve mostly around the fantasy genre, which is great if you're looking for new books within that genre, but not if you're looking for the life and times of taxi cab drivers in the 1970s. I mean, there's only so many times I can watch Taxi Driver without losing my mind as well. Now, this has been one of the most common complaints about the BookTok community that there has been a lack of diversity in the most popular book recommendations on the platform, to such an extent that it has even become a predictable part of the community. A booktuber named The Book Leo has made an entire video dedicated to what makes a book talk book. There are some very few specific things that do very well on video, and that is what makes certain books blow up. So the first thing is crying. If there are a lot of people on TikTok filming themselves crying to a book or finishing a book and crying at the ending, that is very sensational. It's more likely to blow up and people are like, ooh, I wanna know what's up with that one. And then the book becomes more popular. Really? It's that simple? You can get millions of views just by crying? Perfect. I'll set up a camera, press record, and watch the ending of the movie, Wonder. I recommend you go watch it for yourself, but fair warning, you will not survive that movie dealers. Second, in the same vein of creating some kind of big emotional reaction, any book with a very high shock factor is also more likely to blow up on TikTok. There are so many videos of people finishing their books and being like completely shocked by something. Not only is it a fun video to watch, so it's algorithm friendly, it also makes people curious because they're like, oh, I want to know what this shocking thing is in these kind of books tend to blow up on TikTok. The third one is actually quite different. It's aesthetically pleasing books. There is this very specific trend on TikTok where books that just look really, really pretty tend to blow up because again, TikTok is a video platform. So if you can make a video of you unboxing this extremely pretty edition of a book, those videos will get a lot of views and then more people will know about the book and more people want to make a video of them buying that book and unboxing it because they know they're going to get views from it. Four is books that are spicy. If you talk about a book being really spicy, people are gonna be interested in it. This is how narrow the space has become. As Leo mentioned, a book will become popular on BookTok when the content surrounding the book is engaging, like someone crying or any form of uncommon reaction to a book. Which again, is not a high bar when your natural reading face makes you look like you're posing for a stock image. It's a great rule to remember when talking about book talk. Books can go viral purely because they elicit an uncommon reaction. The last point there mentions the word spicy. And if you thought that meant cooking books, oh bless your innocent heart, no. That word means something very, very different. What is the spiciest book you have ever, ever read? All right, here we go. <laughs> Sabotage by Chantal Tessier. I know that the Lord series was really spicy. So if you liked the Lord series, this is a novella that's set in the same world. It can be read as a standalone, but fuck me. It is probably at the top of the spicy list for me. It's two step siblings that absolutely hate each other, but at the same time, they really, really like each other too. They're quite fond of each other. Let's talk about very spicy romantic fantasy books. The writing might be questionable and I fear you may actually enjoy them. The Bonds That Tie by Jay Bree. This is a reverse harem, so we have one girl and we have five guys. Here's a list of books that my husband enjoyed. He didn't read them, but he enjoyed them. <laughs> oh my God, yes. He loved this whole book, all of it. Every single page of it, loved it. This one, this one gave us, this one gave us some ideas. Oh, oh. So if you couldn't tell, spicy means books with sexual content. And as anyone familiar with this genre can tell you, it can get extremely graphic. I can't mention it here because I'd get demonetized. It's that bad. One of the most popular books in this genre is called Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. It's a romance novel that also includes some extremely graphic depictions of sex. But you couldn't tell that from the cover. And apparently neither could bookstores as it was reported that primary schools in Australia 
were shelving these books in the kids section. No son, that's not her daddy. That word means something very, very different. Would you just give me the book please? Thank you. So spicy books with misleading covers is one of just a few genres that dominate book talk. However, the lack of diversity on book talk extends beyond just the genres. It also includes character traits and premises, and it leaves many readers feeling unrepresented in the book talk community. Book talker Sarah Reed that has spoken about her experience as a person of color in the book talk community, saying that she had to put the descriptor black book talk or BIPOC book talk just to find a representation of herself in the community. In an ideal world, she says, she would love to type in book talk and see authors and characters of varied identities and experiences. But that can't happen if readers and book talk users aren't actively diversifying their book talk recommendations, which is a huge ask. I mean, convincing everyone to go out of their way just to make the world a better place? Where have we seen that before? Now it's worth mentioning there are also parts of BookTok that are out of our control as the TikTok algorithm has shown. Out of the thousands of people crying and gasping at words on a page, the algorithm always seems to find patterns and commonalities. And these patterns can take the form of specific authors. One such example is Sarah J Maas. She is the author of the adult fantasy novel, A Cause of Thorns and Roses, or Akata for short. The book was published in 2015, and she was already a well-known and quite popular author from her previous romanticy novels. But in 2020, BookTok found her. I have seen a ton of people recommend this on TikTok. A Court of Thorns and Roses. Ah, uh, book talk, I did it. I finished A Court of Thorns and Roses. Is this a good book? It is a good book. If you want to read it, please read it. Star Wars, Indiana Jones. I wanted to be Han Solo. Sarah J. Mass has been in love with fantasy since she was 12 years old. Three decades later, the fantasy author is a force within the publishing industry. She's written 15 books, sold more than 38 million copies, and is a number one New York Times bestselling author. Yeah, that's pretty freaky, right? Imagine you're working your job right now and I don't know, you're a carpenter. You make a chair, you sell it to someone and then carry on your business. And then five years later, you start gaining followers on Instagram. And then you realize that your chair has become the most popular chair in the world. It's atop the global rankings of chairs and it has become chair of the year in Chairs Weekly. Still, the success of Sarah J Maas has been truly unprecedented, truly a dream come true. But she hasn't been the only one. In fact, she's not even the biggest one. This next author I guarantee you've heard of before. And if you haven't, please let me know in the comments because I am very jealous of your detachment. The author is Colleen Hoover and she published a novel in 2016 called It Ends With Us. And just like Akatar, BookTok did its thing. Lily that bitch, Colleen Hoover. Yo mama is that chick, I'm not gonna call her her name. This book is amazing. We found ourselves on the less prepared side of things. I write because I have to. I think it's my therapy, it feeds my soul. I think I would be writing whether anyone read what I wrote or not. Author Colleen Hoover says she didn't set out for fame, but her love of writing helped fame find her. Hoover dominates the New York Times bestsellers list, once claiming eight of the top 10 paperback spots simultaneously. She sold more than 16 million books last year alone, even outselling the Bible. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Be very careful with what you say next. The Beatles once said that they were bigger than Jesus and look what happened to them. No one can call themselves bigger than the Bible and expect to have success afterwards. No one. The sales for It Ends With Us took the world by storm, in large part because of BookTok. Colin Hoover as a discover topic on TikTok currently has over 117 million posts. And with that kind of attention, Hollywood rats can smell money in the air. So they struck a deal with Hoover for the rights to adapt the novel into a movie. They then cast Blake Lively in the lead role in 2023 and released the movie in 2024. Now the controversy behind this movie is a whole topic in itself. And I've linked a great video by Nicole Raffi on the subject in the description below. And believe me, it gets spicy. 
Well, not, not, not that type of spicy, but I definitely recommend you give the video a watch. But regardless of the controversy, the movie was a complete success. From a budget of $25 million, it grossed $349.2 million worldwide, which in the language of entertainment screams, sequels. Like any popular book series, there is always demand from fans to continue the story. And Colleen Hoover was no different. After the wave of popularity from Book Talk, she would go on to write the next book in the series called It Starts With Us. But unfortunately, Book Talk did not have the desired response. I'm disappointed. There didn't seem to be a conflict and a resolution. Man, expectations are everything. You fall in love with the book and then you set yourself up for failure with the sequel. And I didn't really understand what the point in the book was. I read this book. Here are my thoughts. So I'd give this two stars generously. The problem with this book is that it didn't feel like a fully formed book on its own. It did not feel like it was part of a series. Instead, it read like fan fiction. It read as if I were reading something on Wattpad written by some random person on the internet and not by the actual author of the original book. That's some pretty strong criticism. You know your book's not doing well when it's getting compared to stories written by people who have never left their bedroom. Nevertheless, this has been one of the biggest criticisms on the effects of book talk. When the demand and attention for a book is so high, it's unsurprising that both authors and publishers would want to capitalize on that attention as quickly as possible, forcing books to be published potentially much earlier than they should be, leading to a lesser quality of book. Although It Starts With Us is the most popular culprit of this idea, it is definitely not the only one. So it's important to talk about how the publishing industry used to operate, now how it operates as a result of book talk. The role of the publisher is to first edit the book for mistakes or plot holes, then advertise the book to generate interest, and then distribute that book to bookstores. Think of them as the bouncers of the book world. Your book might look well put together, but if your story does not contain a problematic age gap, I'm sorry, bud, you're not coming in. But for any aspiring author with an audience on book talk, they have the ability to self-publish. And as Zoe Smith from The Catalyst reported, self-publishing may allow an author to create, print, and sell their books more quickly by transcending the need for their book to be picked up by an editor and publisher. Yet the process may be skipping vital steps to creating the best novel possible. She recounted reading Colleen Hoover's recent self-published releases, where she found that her sentence structure was choppy and the plot lagged in many of her novels, reaching dry points with many pages used as fillers in between between the main plot. And because she went through self-publishing and then used BookTok to promote her novels, she was still able to quickly become a sensation, even if her writing was subpar. And that's a key point to note about BookTok. Regardless of the quality of her writing, she was able to become insanely popular on BookTok thanks to the engaging content being made with her books. Now on BookTok, there are a variety of formats that get a lot of engagement. When discussing what makes a BookTok book, we concluded that the book needs to elicit an uncommon reaction. And filming those reactions is one of the most popular premises for book talk videos. Most commonly, it's people crying when reading a book or being shocked when reading a surprise in the book. Motherfucker gave me my thousand girl kisses, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Did you finish? <laughs> I just finished. I don't know what to feel right now. I want another. Yeah, reactions are the beating heart of the internet. Without them, the walls would come crumbling down. And then we have more TikToky videos. These are usually people making funny sketches to trending sounds or songs whilst referencing the book, or they're not even speaking. They just take a sound effect that everyone is using in their videos and just film the book cover. <laughs> There's mummy's mortgage. <laughs> oh, there's the food that we could have had this month. <laughs> in it goes. <laughs> oh, there's our holiday to Bermuda going right in the case. You've been called to the school board for a disciplinary hearing. What have I done? We don't allow relations between students at our academy. And I respect that. I have tried. 
again and again to bat the boys away, but there's only so much one girl can do. And I do have this natural magnetism. Yeah, we're actually getting a lot of complaints from the wizards that you're harassing them. Which ones? Velocino. Bellicin what? You can't ask the professors if you can see their trouser wand. Okay, first of all, that only happened twice. And second of all, Bellasino is a stupid name. And finally, we have the artistic style videos. This is where people will post various images inspired by the book that they're reading, along with a backing track. I get it. I get it. They're all hot. I get it. I get it. We've already discussed the simple style of book recommendations with Kate Jacobs, but not everyone has the experience and frankly, the number of books as Kate. I mean, Kate, do your books have enough room to store you? A lot of creators make these types of videos, but over time, the content has become more and more creative. For example, they might categorize their recommendations by genre or certain archetypes that are present in the book. But by far the most commonly used category, is the trope category. Creators will share lists of their favorite books that all include the same trope. Here's a rapid fire list of some of my favorite book tropes and books that accompany those tropes. First up, fake dating. Trope is a recurring element or a frequently used plot device in a work of literature. So the main character being the chosen one, that's a trope. An enemies turned lovers storyline, that is also a trope. With great power comes great responsibility. No, that is not a trope, but it is the greatest line in cinematic history. And if you have a problem with that, I'll be on Twitter at Robo Studios. You won't, you won't. Because these tropes are so common, they end up being the biggest source of content for book talk creators. And it performs well. As of airing, the hashtag book tropes has 331,000 posts on TikTok, with each post getting tens of thousands of views. It's so popular that authors aware of this style of content will write new books that include these tropes so they can gain some of that attention. Now, this practice didn't originate on BookTok. Many authors have used well-known tropes to improve the financial successes of their books which is ultimately the goal of any full-time author. But now it has become one of the biggest issues discussed on BookTok. Because both readers and creators on BookTok read a lot more than the average Joe, the prevalence of these tropes in new releases is much more noticeable. And you can see the appeal for authors. If they adhere to formulaic trends that are overwhelmingly demanded by users, they are given more steady financial support. Although there are many users that do like this style of writing, there are also many users that don't, believing that using easily identifiable tropes and formulas means that authors have less room to be inventive or original in their writing, meaning that their new releases feel commercialized and ultimately dulled. It's like the Fast and Furious franchise. You have people that stopped watching after the fourth one, but then you have your core audience that's just hanging on to every word, desperately waiting for Vin Diesel to say family. But just as much as authors can benefit from this practice, so too can content creators, as it enables them to generate content that has a track record of success, allowing them to achieve their goals, generating income to build their online businesses. It looks like normal content until you see this key identifier, a tiny shopping cart. It's the new era of TikTok shop. TikTok now trying to be more than a social media app and what appears to be a face off with Amazon. TikTok shop opening its carts to the US in September. Everything from skincare to spicy pickles, all directing users to their new e-commerce venture. Right, it means that if you're watching a TikTok made by Johnny from Accounts, who's dancing around in his living room with an elephant costume on, Johnny can leave a link on your video screen to his elephant costume for you to purchase directly from TikTok, just to ensure that you won't be damaging your Amazon purchase history. Now, obviously that is a huge step for TikTok and a huge plus for BookTok creators. Before the TikTok shop, the way creators would earn money was by receiving a percentage of a revenue pool from TikTok, depending on how successful their videos were. But with the shop, creators can recommend any book they like in a TikTok video 
and leave a link for the viewer to purchase that book. And if the viewer does purchase that book with that link, the creator will receive a percentage of its sale. And this is called affiliate marketing. If your family has an unemployed male in their late 20s, I guarantee you've heard this term before. Although it has only been a year since this feature was added to TikTok, the impact has been felt by bookstores worldwide. Popular publisher HarperCollins and British retailers WH Smith and Bookshop.org came together to collaborate with TikTok to create the BookTok category on the TikTok shop. The feature has also been praised as it supports small independent businesses who will be selling their books via the new feature, which is an undeniable positive. But there is a flip side to this new feature. Now, promotions and advertisements are part of the experience in BookTok. The original posts were people like Kate, who were really passionate about books and used TikTok videos to share that passion with others. But in 2024, because BookTok has become the center of advertising for the publishing industry, publishers can sponsor creators to promote their upcoming book releases. Creators will post the same recommendation videos as Kate, but will also leave a link on the video to purchase the recommended book and be compensated for doing so. It just feels like it's been a while since I sat down and chatted about books and my thoughts and my opinions and my rating. So that's what we're doing today. But before I get into all of the books and all of the stuff, I wanna say thank you to today's sponsor, which is Book of the Month. For the month of October, I chose was The Boyfriend by Frida McFadden, her newest release. I did have a good time reading this. It was very fast paced, like all Frida McFadden books. The ending really did get me. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a perfectly normal thing to do. In fact, many of my colleagues as YouTube creators rely on sponsorship deals for their income. But what it does is it calls into question the motivations behind content creation on BookTok. If the incentive to post content on the platform is monetary, how can the viewers trust that the content they are watching is authentic? If someone films themselves crying from reading A Little Life, is it still considered an authentic reaction if they have a shop link to the book on the screen? If a creator lists off their top five romanticy novels, can you trust their ratings if the video has hashtag ad in its description? And if Johnny is dancing around in an elephant costume and has a link to the costume and hashtag ad in his video, you might think that his motivation is monetary, but I guarantee you it has done nothing other than for a love of elephants. But with all jokes aside, because of this practice, a lot of TikTok users have pushed back. While TikTok doesn't disclose its data, market intelligence firm Sensor Tower says global monthly active users on the platform grew only 3% in 2023, a sharp dip from 12% the year before, and insider intelligence showing screen time plateauing. Although TikTok has proof that their shop feature is not loved by users, they still continue to promote this feature as the revenue generated from it is greater than the advertising revenue generated from user growth. So with all the complaints against BookTok, its lack of diversity, the dip in quality and formulaic writing styles of new books, or the financial incentives behind the community creating potentially inauthentic content, what can we do to nullify these issues? Well, to start, the sub-communities within BookTok should be embraced. I know that many people are frustrated with a lack of representation in mainstream BookTok, but the souring truth is nothing is going to change about the algorithm on TikTok's end. So we need to be the change we want to see in the community. If you come across a book that has become popular on sub-communities like BIPOC BookTok, Post a video about it, share it with friends. Those actions can only help. And for the books that feel like a formulaic repeat of the previous, although you as a reader may find that irritating, maybe that book is just not for you. Formulas in art, as we've mentioned before, have been used throughout all of modern society. So they should not be villainized and BookTok should not be receiving the blame. And finally, is BookTok purely performative? This question has had so many different takes and opinions. Many people have expressed their beliefs that BookTok has made reading more of a performance for others rather than an enjoyable experience in itself. But the response I agree with most comes from BookTuber, according to Alina, who sums up the debate quite perfectly. I always share this picture here as an example of content about books that clearly has nothing to do with the book itself. But if you wanted to take that argument to an extreme, you could argue that everything that exists on social media is performance by virtue of the fact that it is information about oneself that is made for the consumption of other people. Your gym selfies are performative. The picture of that one cake that you baked that one time is also performative. That doesn't mean that you went to the gym or baked a cake just for the picture though, does it? The same reasoning applies to content about books. There's a high chance that some reading took place before or after the picture was taken. Exactly. The entire reason someone posts a video on BookTok is for someone else to watch that video, which defines every post ever made on any social media. 
it has always been a performance. In fact, even this man, claiming to have read 5,000 books in eight years, is doing so to a camera, making his whole story a complete performance. But don't you worry, sir. I believe you. I believe you. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you next time.